The candidates in the order they will appear on the ballot. Democrat J.B. Pritzker, private businessman and philanthropist. Republican Governor Bruce Rauner. He is also a businessman and philanthropist. Libertarian Grayson Cash Jackson, who retired from the Navy after 20 years. Republican State Senator Sam McCann, running on the conservative ticket. Thank you all, gentlemen, for coming. Mr. Jackson, you are a retired Navy veteran who has been held in contempt of court for failure to pay child support. Why should voters have confidence that you're prepared to run a $38 billion budgeted business in the state of Illinois? Well, I, I think my case is a perfect example of the flaws of our General Assembly. I'm a perfect example of what happens when uh, a member of our communities get caught up into a judicial system that they're woefully and painfully unaware of. I served my country for 20 years. For 20 years, I served this country. And then to come home to, to Illinois and have to fight to be a father, you see, Lake County, Illinois, much like the rest of Illinois, is setting support orders that sometimes exceed national recommendations by twofold. A judge in Lake County said, sir, you're going to have to turn over 40 percent of your income starting tomorrow. Isn't that the judiciary system that you are criticizing, not the legislature? Absolutely not, because who wrote the laws? Who appoints uh, the men and women sitting over those that, that work within child support that make these calculations. These are the failures that have continued to occur that are negatively impacting not just myself as a Navy veteran, but our entire, our entire state. You know what, the, the entire state and the way that's being run is just painfully flawed. The fact that we continue to elect people like Governor Bruce Rauner, no offense, sir, but you and Mr. J.B. Pritzker have no clue what it is for people like me to live in the conditions that we live in, where we have to struggle every single day to pay our taxes. I owned a home in Lake County, Illinois. When I purchased it, my taxes were 4500 By the time I sold that home, they were $9,000. Mr. Jackson, do you have a, a tax plan? Absolutely, I do. The only thing that I would like to do, I'd like to keep the flat tax, but everybody living at and below the poverty line, I would like to give them a, a, the ability to waive that entire income tax so that they, in effect, can begin to crawl up out of poverty. We have to address those that are living on the lower level and people like myself. The tax rate right now is fine. Raise your hand if you would consider raising the sales tax on any services. I take that as a no from all of you. Would you consider extending taxes to retirement income? A show of hands. Again, I take that as a no. Not even attorney's fees. I believe Governor Rauner on sales taxes, you once suggested that. And Mr. Pritzker, I thought you opened the door to some possibility of some services, no? No. Okay. Uh, may, I, may I remark on that? The only yeah. way that I would consider that is if we were to uh, restructure the property tax scheme on a consumption tax where um, on sales and services of goods, if we were to take that money and reallocate that to property tax, that is a much more moral taxation uh, system than doing property taxes. The current property uh, tax structure right now places an undue burden on citizens. It's driving, it is the largest factor for driving people out of the state right now. And a consumption and service tax is a much more moral transaction because you, the consumer, consent to that tax. You have to get government out of pensions. Anything that government touches, including our pension system. So how do you do that? And how do you, you assure transition that it over to a private management 403B or 401K? What Governor Rauner proposed and suggested late last year was that the federal government should allow the state of Illinois to declare bankruptcy. We would immediately go to junk credit status. Remember, under his leadership, we've fallen eight notches in That's credit Democrat. status. We have the lowest That's Democrat rating, leadership. credit rating in the entire Same nation. Difference. Bruce didn't and do he it. He wants to bankrupt the state. That's how he wants to deal with pensions. Mike Casper is Madigan's attorney who personally sued to block term limits and fair map reforms. That's not true. I Mr. supported Pritzker the has independent funded maps him. movement. Neither one Senator of them fair maps. My support here. Neither, neither, one of, neither, neither one of you guys. You, you wouldn't even Tur come over to the Tribune to debate. Mr. Jackson, Maybe. are you for term limits? Absolutely. I'm for term limits. I'm for cutting their salaries. I'm for cutting their okay, pensions. Okay, let's just stick with term yeah. limits. Senator McCann, yeah, you're but, in the Senate. But, Mr. Jackson. We have to reform every single aspect of our government. There is zero transparency. Our legislators are Let's running Let's talk around. about out-migration. 
and that's exactly what I'm getting to. But we're not going to do the whole government is a at once. root cause of how the policies in this state have failed continuously. We don't hold our legislators accountable. They have a constitutional. I swore an oath to the Constitution for 20 years. I know what it means. But for you have a constitutional obligation to pass a balanced budget. Didn't do it for over two years. Placed the state in the in, in the uh, state of affairs that it's in, and people Senator continue McCain. to lose. I have act. another question. Speak, gentlemen. It ha doesn't deal with the duties of the office of governor. May I speak? Just a second. Okay. But I'd like your thoughts on free expression. Okay. Where do you stand? <laughs> where do you stand on the controversy surrounding Colin Kaepernick and NFL players taking a knee, Mr. Jackson? Uh, great question. And uh, this has really been a difficult one to kind of go back and forth with, especially amongst the veteran community. Look, uh, I may not agree with what Colin Kaepernick did or where he chose to do it, but he got that recommendation from a veteran. To do it in the method that he did, he did it to extend respect to veterans, to extend respect to the flag. And I may not agree with, uh, with what he's doing or why he's doing it, but I fought to defend his right to do it. And, but he must understand that doing it at your work, you must go ahead and endure the, the private ramifications that come from that. And I believe that he's done a fantastic job about holding up under that scrutiny. My opponents fail to understand that they have to swear an oath to the Constitution. The evidence does not support that more gun, gun legislation is going to make us any safer. More people are killed in Chicago every year with hands and fists, not with an AR-15, not with a bump stock. What is causing the violence, we have to get to the root causes. A failed war on drugs, incarcerating thousands upon thousands, generations of fathers who are trying to provide for their family. They did it on a black market. They sold drugs. Drugs are not a criminal issue. They are a health issue. We need to address those things first. We need to restore the family unit. And then we also do, I would agree with Governor Rauner, we need to create jobs. So where McCann. has that focus been? Yeah. Why, why are we worried about the hackers when right here, our General Assembly, the Democrats and Republicans continue to rig elections year after year, <laughs> year after year. I mean, uh, That's it's, a good point. it's That's absolutely enough. absurd that, that that we're focusing on Russia and right here in my own backyard, right here in Chicago. I mean, the news stories have flooded out of here for decades about the gerrymandering and the ballot access laws. I mean, I had to get yep. 50,000 signatures to get on the ballot. So you you're not guys worried about cybersecurity. Y'all needed 5,000. Mr. Jackson, would you guarantee full funding of MAP grants in universities? I can't do that. I cannot guarantee anything given the state of the General Assembly. If we don't put common sense people in there that understand that the more money we take from people, the more recklessly we spend, the more that our government grows, I can't make any promises until we start replacing a lot of the General Assembly. $97 million buying thousands of acres of land around what would be the South Suburban Airport. It's a lot of money. As governor, one of you, would you be for or against that project? Really, just a yes or no. Senator McCann? Yes. Mr. No. Jackson? No. Governor Rauner? No. Mr. Prisker? Well, we need to make sure we're not taking jobs away from the other two major airports. Mr. Mr. Jackson, Definitely. would you cross that picket line? Would I cross it and join them? Would you cross the picket line? Would you observe the picket line? Are you sympathetic Absol or not? Absolutely. You know what? I, I've been a political <clears throat> activist for a couple of years, speaking out against uh, a lot of the things happening across this country. But uh, to JB's point over there, talking about medical coverage, look, it, the expansion of, of Medicaid and uh, government and health care is what is the direct result for the inflated cost right now. We have to get government out of health care. We don't want a minute more. I spent 20 years uh, dealing with health care with, with the military. Mr. McCann, want Senator that. McCann. I proudly said that I would be a loud, booming voice for downstate Illinois, and I promise you that I will be a loud, booming voice for downstate Illinois and the suburbs. It's not just Chicago. It's the whole state. It's the entire state. Do you feel that you pay the proper amount for a haircut. Uh, my good friend Tanya on the, the naval base up at Great Lakes Naval Station, she's been cutting my hair for about four years, and I pay a little over $8. With a tip? Uh, a little bit more with a tip, about $12. I, I also believe in campaign finance reform, which the governor does not believe in. So, Governor... I, I think that we need to change the system. In, in Washington, D.C. You believe it, you do it. In Washington, D.C., they have opened this floodgate. You don't spend 200 And it's Governor Rauner that wrote a $50 million check to start his campaign. So, Shame on you, Mr. Mr. Pritzker. Jackson, Shame on you. Mr. Corruption. Jackson, how back much have you porch. spent on your campaign? We're doing business uh -huh. the back porch of the governor's See, what my, what my opponents are demonstrating is their lack, or, lack of concern or respect 
for their opponents over here. They're, they're pretending as though we do not exist. I spent $25,000. You two gentlemen spent what, 200 million to get on this stage? Who's the fiscally minded guy? I'm spending less than $1,000 for a percent in the poll. You guys are spending $400,000. Ms. Senator McCann, how much have you spent? You know, I, so far we've spent under a million dollars. These two guys will each spend more on paper clips than we spend on our whole campaign. I, and I think, I think Citizens United is the greatest threat to our republic today. And really, these two guys on the end are just this different sides of the same coin. They're trying to buy their way into office. I hope the people see through it and don't allow them to do so. Don't. Mr. Jackson, you're going to get the final question. As we come close to the end of this broadcast, when somebody says Springfield, I think a lot of people automatically think political dysfunction. So Mr. Jackson, as a conservative and as a libertarian, how do you end that in Springfield? Or do I, you want to? I do. I do want to. I think we have to recognize and understand that, look, over 50% of our state, they're moderates. They're independents. They don't align. They're not very conservative. They're not very liberal. They put a perfect demonstration of what politics is like in the General Assembly. And this is why we don't have a productive conversation. This is why nothing ever gets done. We have to begin to elect people that come from our neighborhoods that understand what it is to struggle day in and day out. And they can sit down and have a conversation and break bread and share a beer. When we can do those things, we can move beyond the partisan politics that these two guys have been demonstrating up here. And we can begin to move our state forward because then real people are coming together. They're discussing real solutions because you know what? You're living the same damn problems that I am every single day. Now let's have a round of applause for our candidates. From the NBC Tower, I'm Carol Marine. Thank you and good night.